Hello everybody, this is Barbie. Well, I'm gonna start my video again. Me and this technology doesn't get along so good, I'll tell you for sure. I was doing the video almost done and I got a phone call, which I forgot to turn everything off. You know what I'm saying? As my daddy would used to say, can't get all the coons up one tree, seems like. So I had to start it over. But this is what I've come up with. This is made out of uh, a paper bag, using a paper bag for a pattern. I did not use the paper bag. I just used it for a pattern. Um, the reason I did that is because I used this printed uh, canvas that I was telling you about. And it feels like soft glove leather, leather and it's just really, really pretty. Um, and I wanted to use it. I already had it all printed out and I had it printed on both sides. So let me show you what I did. I just put me a little button on here, number one, and, and this is just wrapped around the button. As you can see, it's wrapped around pretty good. So, yeah, what did I do? You can take it all the way off that way if you want to. This is some Artie Mays paper. Uh, that I printed off her her kit and again this is her paper too and I just printed it on the back side of the canvas as well that's their fox glove kit and then this is the little pocket that I made and it's printed on the inside as well and it's got the little fabric gussets we were talking about and I'll show you real quick how to make that it's real easy and what I wanted to do here is when I first started I thought well I want to use this, but if I use this and glue it onto the paper bag like you would with any paper, I've lost my cool print I have on this side, plus I'm using double the paper. So that's why I decided, well, I don't have to use that paper bag, do I? No. Nothing says you have to, right? So, I wanted to have a little spine, which I decided what I was gonna do to make a spine in here, so I could put a little journal in here, like I did on the last one I made. And I wanted it to be really strong, and with this being canvas, what I did was, there was a little white uh, piece of, uh, well, you know, that, where it didn't print, where the print didn't print. So I thought that'd be just perfect. So I left that on there for my one side of my spine and then I cut my uh, print part here which was uh, let me measure it for you real quick if you want to use the exact measurements uh, the exact measurements to do it exactly like I've done it here using this little white part is four and a quarter inches so the actual print part was three and three quarter so then that left a half inch spine now you can adjust that however you want if you want a bigger spine. Same thing with the depth of the pocket, but I'm just giving you what I did for those that want to duplicate it. This overall length, uh, length is 10 inches, okay? So I cut me one that had the spine on it. The second inside pocket does not have the spine. This actual cut of this piece was three and three quarter by 10. Okay, and on this side, I used two different papers. It's in the same kit, but it's two different papers, uh, which I think coordinate really pretty together. So when I cut this piece here, I did the same thing. It had a little white piece down there and I just left the white piece on there. And then I lapped them over together and glued it so that double it made the spine really strong. Then I sewed it with a, a stitch all the way around to really make it strong so it would stay together. And again, as you can see, I used a, zig that, a zigzag stitch all the way around the edges. And before I put the gussets on here on the side, these little things, um, I went ahead and took this piece of uh, canvas and stitched all the way around it before I attached it. And I did the same thing on this side. I went ahead and stitched all the way around it, like so, after I had glued the spine together. And then I'd stitch down here too. 
So it's just a, a matter of stitching around it. You can do it in whatever sequence you want. So then you had two pieces of canvas here flapping, you know, there was nothing to hold it together. So at that point, you can just either stitch it together like so. If you don't want the gussets in there, it'll work fine. You just can't put too much in this pocket. Um, so that's up to you. Um, but if you want to put the little gussets in, let me see. I had one I messed up. I didn't get, I turned it the wrong way, so I'll show you here. What you do is you take your little piece of fabric, and this piece of fabric I used was Overall, it was three inches wide by four inches long. So three wide, four inches long. I folded it in half, so it's, it's this width here would be an inch and a half, because this one's the wrong cut, but it'd be an inch and a half, so you, you fold the three inches in half, it makes it an inch and a half wide, and you got four inch length. So then I made a little stitch all the way down just a little stitch as you can see and what this allows it to do is it allows it to when you close it it's going to allow it to uh, accordion in like go in naturally because this little stitch is here all the way down and then this other little dart stitch I made in which I just folded my fabric in half so I could get approximately the half of it which would be two inches on this four inch length and then I just made my little dart stitch and I darted in about a quarter of an inch so if you measure over you want to do it it's not necessary but measure over a quarter of an inch you could take your pencil make your quarter inch mark and then you could fold this in half and find the half just to give you a, a something to go by and then you put your needle there and just sew down to this next little mark so that will give your dart. And then when you glue this in together, like so, you're gonna put glue along this, this side here, well, like the inside. You put the glue along the inside, lay your piece of fabric down on the inside, of course, and then you'd press it down. So that would be gluing this first, this gusset into the back side of the pocket. And then the next thing, you do the same thing on the front side of the pocket. Put your glue on the pocket itself. Make sure your fabric is in there straight. Push it down and you've got your, everything's glued in correctly. And then you have your little gusset, which then folds neatly in the pleat, like so. Okay, so that's, I think, pretty understandable. Okay, if I don't get confused about what I've already said on the other one and what I haven't said in this one. Um, what I did on the on this, my decision making was, I used, like I said, I used the paper bag, and I'm going to show you how to fold it here in a minute, which you probably already know, but I'll show you. Um, I, I decided I wanted to have approximately a three and a half inch by nine and a half inch journal. I think that's what I decided, yeah. A three and a half by nine and a half inch journal that will fit in here and still give you about a quarter of an inch on either side. And it'll, when the three and a half inch, see this is a four inch pocket, so the three and a half inch should lay in there good and just come right along here. So then when you fold this down like so, you wanna have a little bit of space up there at the top. See? So I just used this little corner as a guide and I folded it to where that would be about like so. But in actuality, depending on how much, how many papers you put in here, how big your spine is, how fat it is, will determine how much of a roll you need here. But you've got plenty of room. With this being folded the way it is, there should be plenty of room to put a nice little chunky journal in here and still be able to lap it over and cover it. Okay, and the next thing is I sewed my little button on. I used the... Um, Le wax leather uh, thread, the same thread I used to um, sew my um, signatures in. And I found a button I liked, and I measured the little length of the tab here, this from here to here, and determined I needed it at three and three, uh, three and a quarter to make it halfway. 
uh, put my button on there. Then I have this little board. I didn't want to poke my journal, so I put my little board in there. And then I took my um, awl, just like I was going to sew a signature in, have my button on here, and then poke it and poke it all the way through the canvas. So you've got your holes where you need them. Then you just need to get your uh, thread and stitch it in. What I did is I started out with the tail on this side because I wanted to tie it. And then I put it through twice before I brought up the last strand. And then I just did a square knot and then another square knot and pulled it real tight. And this uh, wax thread won't go anywhere. Then to make sure it did come undone, I flipped it over, cut me a little um, circle, used my circle punch. I think it was an inch circle punch, yeah. Found a little piece of my uh, canvas I wanted it to match and put my Fabri-Tac glue on here and put my circle down. And therefore, you, you have served two purposes. You have strengthened your um, button here and you've glued the back of this so that makes sure that double sure that this does not come undone because it's all glued and um, this covers the uh, hole which keeps it the keeps it from uh, worrying about having to that it'll pull through is what i'm trying to say okay well i think that's pretty self-explanatory then i took my little piece of uh, uh sorry silk and I just did it real simple. Just take it and wrap it around once. You don't even have to tie it. And then you can wrap it around. I like to wrap it around and then come back around and go back around again and then come back and go around again. And then you got it like so. And it's secure. Plus, like I said, you can take this off and get it out of your way if you do it like that. It's not tied on, and uh, but it's it's secure. Or you could, you know, you could put a Velcro uh, tab or something there if you preferred, but I like the look of the, sorry, so. Okay, now that we've got that done, here's my little paper bag. This, this is a lunch bag. I got it on, I think at Walmart or Amazon. I don't remember which, but I'll give you the measurements. Approximately six wide after when the gussets are still in by 12 inches long. I think they're called large lunch bags. Hold on a minute, I gotta have some tea. I've been talking too much, <laughs> as usual. Okay, now this is sort of, when I first saw it done, I thought, whoa, wait a minute. I don't know what you did next. It, it, it was confusing to me, I don't know why, but I'm gonna try to make it simple for you. Okay, this is what happens when you open your little bag up, like so. You see it's all opened up. The first thing you do is you take your little pleat that was folded in and you fold it out like that. And I, I like to go ahead and press mine out so it stays out. Okay, then you do the same thing to the other side. Fold it. And now you've got a situation where you've got it like so. Okay, then when you pull it out like this, you just pop it out. When you pop it out, it just automatically gets this, this like so. See, it just automatically allows you to push it down like that. Now these are not precise, so realize that. Then you've got this little shape here. So what you wanna do then is take it and fold this in half to where you've got the flap basically of your clutch, like so. So you see. Now at this point in time, I would glue this down, all this down, so this is all one piece. And then if the next thing you would do is determine how much of a how much of a fold that you want. 
I usually like to cut this off here. But let's just say we want about that much. See, that's a four inch fold. So that's good, four inches. And this is already glued together. And then you would take and decide how much you want your flap to go down. I would leave a good inch and a half or so like here. Let's just do it like that. From here to here, that's about, yeah, about an inch and a quarter. But anyhow, let's just say an inch and a quarter. That's what you want. So then you just fold it down, keeping your inch and a quarter on either side. Okay, at this point, what I did on the other one is, I got my scoreboard out and I scored about a, a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch here. And you could do another quarter and another quarter. And then that gives you some score lines that allows this to have some, some width at the bottom so you can um, so you can put things in and it wouldn't be too tight. But that's up to you. Same thing over here. I would score, you know, about every quarter of an inch, like so, all the way across. And then I would take it and make sure I had my, this was pliable here so that it would have a bit of a rounded top like that. I hope I'm in frame, yeah. A bit of a rounded top when you get everything all said and done. I'll have a bit of a rounded bottom and a bit of a rounded top, like that. Okay, at this point, that's when you would take your um, papers, whatever kind of paper you want. Now, there's something I learned uh, when I did the other one. I wanted a pocket in here, like so, but this is really flimsy. And even if you put paper on here, to me, it just was too flimsy. So, um, I tried to, I took book board and I folded it in half and I got, so I could just put the book board down in there and it would, it would make a bottom to it. That's why I folded it in half. But it was really difficult because as you know, when you put glue on something and you try to put it in, it just like sticks to it and it was really fiddly and hard to do. So I told myself, well, that was dumb. Why didn't I cut it open? So what I would do is I would cut this I'd probably cut this open here where the seam is. It doesn't matter, I suppose. But let's just say, let's just cut this open like so. So that way, what you can do then is you can kind of get your board, I mean your, your book board, and glue one side of the book board, or you can even put glue on the inside here rather than the book board itself, because it just needs to have a, it doesn't have to be solid all the way to the corners just if you just put it like on this area here let's say and then you raise this up then you when you slid your book board in it would be a lot easier to get it in on one side and glue it just on one side and make sure it's straight and press it down then you could flip this over and put your glue on these two flaps here and then take your book board and you know push it down. So you're going to put a piece of paper on here anyhow, so it doesn't matter if this is open. You could even open up both sides if you want. If it made it easier for you, it doesn't matter. Because you're going to put paper here and you're going to put paper here. So, that was my idea on that. And the other thing is, is um, what I did on this one that I put the book board on, my original one I made that I showed you, I slit uh, the edges of the bag right here. No, I didn't. I didn't. I'll take that back. I'm lying. What I did is I used um, I used some of this and I made my little gusset like we talked about with the other little gusset there. Like so. 
and I attached it leaving a little flap sticking out so I could wrap it around and glue it there and then the same thing over here wrap it around and glue it there so therefore that gave me my gusset so that's how I did that one because I was gluing to the paper bag okay then um, I decided well I like that look so I might as well make it uniform so that's when I decided to use the same fabric the same and I decided the width what width I wanted you can use whatever width you like I liked it about like so so just measure however wide you want your piece of fabric and um, cut strips or tear strips and do the whole whole way around and then also I use the same fabric as on, on this part here um, and that also reinforced uh, only on the inside I didn't use it on the outside I just used it on the inside right in through here I put a strip here I'm trying to remember what I did yeah I just used it on the inside and i it was about half that wide and I put it across there and that reinforces that pocket yeah that reinforces the pocket and then you also have your the width of it like like we talked about here I had that scored so then uh, that's where I'm gonna stitch my journal so that was the reason I wanted to make sure that it was good and strong so that's why I used the fabric before I put my gussets in I used the fabric on the inside there but I didn't use fabric on the outside you can if you want I like to see the little strings there but there's one thing I did do after I had it all stitched in I went ahead and put a little bit of tacky glue uh, the three-in-one glue on each hole and made sure that it was glued in good so that there was be no movement of the string since this is just paper and um, also I added some extra fabric and some washi tape here on this side uh, to give it extra strength so those are just some ideas on how to use a paper bag and um, on this one all I did instead of putting a button on I put a little grommet I mean not a grommet an eyelet there and just ran a piece of uh, ribbon through it and tied it so that's that's another way you can do paper bag journals so I hope that helps answer questions for those that had wanted to try it um, and I if you um, if you decide to give it a try let me know I'd sure like to see what you come up with and uh, until next time this is Barbie saying bye 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 hope y'all have a beautiful day and remember Happiness is crafting. I hope I was in frame. If not, forgive me. Bye-bye.